Sit around deer camp long enough and you'll hear the story of a deer who ducked an arrow or took a shot to the shoulder and lived to see another day. Whitetails in motion are my absolute favorite subject to paint. In my studio, I can freeze a buck in time and give myself hours, days, and even weeks to study and paint him in a pose that I choose. As a bow hunter though, moving deer present the same challenge for me that they do you. All I can do is give him a meh with my mouth and stop him for a couple seconds, rarely in the perfect spot for a shot. So to help my fellow bow hunters, I wanted to share some art and information from my popular print, The Anatomy and Physiology of the Whitetail Buck, that shows a few things I found helpful in a deer stand. First off, do deer really duck an arrow? The answer is not really. A spooked deer will drop, loading up his back legs to bound away. Bow hunters know this as ducking the arrow, but it's really not ducking at all. It's simply gravity pulling the deer downward as he loads up his legs for that first quick motion. An alert buck would seem to have an advantage here, as common sense would tell you that his alerted state would result in lightning fast reaction time. But the amount of movement it takes to drop his head and neck to bound away takes valuable time. A feeding buck, which is still highly alert, already has his head and neck low. When he snaps his neck upward, this acts like a fulcrum, pulling his body down further and faster than gravity alone could if he was standing upright. One thing you rarely hear bow hunters talk about is the angle of a deer's rib cage as it quarters. For example, if you take your hand and hold it away from you and spread your fingers apart, then turn your hand 90 degrees, you can see the gaps close down as the angle gets steeper. The same thing happens with a deer's rib cage. As the deer turns and the angle of the shot gets steeper, the gap between individual ribs closes down, creating a shield of bone. While the ribs on a deer are not particularly heavy, this wall of bone can still deflect an arrow. I've seen it happen to a buddy and it simply left a long scar in the buck's hide the entire length of his rib cage. So keep this in mind on hard quartering away shots. In these instances, it's best to try to slip an arrow in behind the last rib than aim too far forward and risk a glancing blow off the rib cage. On a buck walking broadside, wait until the leg closest to you is in the forward position to shoot. The leg joint will be clear of the heart and lower lungs, and the buck's shoulder muscles will be stretched thinly across his rib cage rather than in a tightly flexed mass in front of his vitals. Timing this shot is nearly impossible if the buck is cruising by quickly, like they often do during the rut. But a feeding deer will almost always give you this opportunity if you're patient. Hopefully you found this art and information helpful. Best of luck to you this fall, and be sure to check out ryankirby.com for these prints and so much more. Also check out our podcast, The Art of Hunting, for a weekly behind-the-scenes look at what's going on in my studio.